Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you a simple example about amplitude modulation in GNU Octave. Amplitude modulation is quite an old modulation technique, but still in use in some uh, communication techniques. And as the name already indicates, amplitude modulation means that we are modulating the amplitude. So we have a signal that we want to transmit, for example, a music signal, speech or whatever. And we take the signal and with this signal we modulate the amplitude of another signal. The other signal will be the carrier signal, the signal that we use in order to be able to transmit our um, signal, for example, over an attached antenna or whatever. And the signal that we want to transmit, let's call it message signal because it contains the information that we want to transmit. And the signal that we need in order to be able to transmit it will be called uh, carrier signal. And again, with our message signal, we are modulating, so changing the amplitude over time of our carrier signal. And you, that's also a reason why amplitude modulation has some drawbacks because it's very sensitive to amplitude errors because we only change the amplitude of our carrier signal. Nowadays we have um, much more complex modulation techniques like uh, digital um, modulation techniques or frequency modulation techniques. But um, to step into the field of modulation at all, I think amplitude modulation is a good starting point because it's easy to understand. All the mathematical background will be linked in the description below of this video, by the way. So let's directly head over and perform a small example. We clear our workspace variables. We are closing all maybe open windows and we are clearing our command window. Because we are in the digital domain, in order to generate some signals, we have to set a sampling frequency, let's say 32 kilohertz. Arbitrary value, it has to be at least twice as high as our um, highest frequency component. And then we need a message signal, so the signal that we want to transmit. Here we just take a single carrier, so a single sine wave or cosine wave, let's say with a frequency of 100 hertz. Again, this could be any signal like uh, a voice a signal or a music signal. And we need a time domain vector in order to generate the signals. So the time domain vector will start at zero, incremented by one divided by the sampling frequency. And we are going up to 10 periods of our message signal. And then our message signal XM will be a cosine, for example, or could also be a sine wave or chirp or whatever, two times pi times FM times T. So this is the information that we want to transmit a symbol um, carrier with the frequency of 100 hertz. And for sure, as every sine wave, we have to determine here an amplitude. And in this case, I take 0.1. And here it's something that it's important for amplitude modulation, which is the called modulation index. The modulation index is the ratio between the amplitude of our message signal compared to the amplitude of our carrier signal that we will generate in a minute. So in our scenario, our amplitude of our message signal is 0 0.1 and um, in a second we will generate a carrier signal that has an amplitude of 1. So our modulation index will be 0 0.1. And uh, it's important that the modulation index um, uh, fulfills some criteria, in this case being below 1. Uh, and to be able to demodulate our signal on the receive side without losses. Okay, so then we need our carrier signal and the carrier frequency is much higher than our uh, um, highest frequency of our message signal. So let's say we take two kilohertz and we generate our carrier signal by using a sine wave with an amplitude of one because modulation index. Sine two times pi times fc times t. This is our carrier signal. So basically these are the two signals that we need. The message signal that we want to transmit and the carrier signal XC um, of which we modulate the amplitude according to our message signal. And our amplitude modulated signal follows the following formula. XC plus one multiplied with, sorry, XM plus one multiplied with XC. So what is happening here? 
Remember the trigonometrical, uh, trigonometrical theorems. If we have two sine waves and multiply them, then it will result in the sum of two sine waves, where one sine wave is, uh, is the, uh, contains the sum frequency and the other sine wave contains the difference frequency, meaning that if we multiply xm and xc, we have a sine wave with 100 hertz and a sine wave with 2 kilohertz. And trigonometrical theorem tells us, okay, one part of the output will be a sine wave with the sum frequency, so 100 plus 2 kilohertz, and the other one will be a sine frequency that contains the difference frequency, so 2 kilohertz minus 100 hertz. And this additional one here tells us, okay, we also transmit the carrier at 2 kilohertz. So our amplitude modulated signal will have three signal components. First, the carrier, because of the one here. And the two other signal components are the sum frequency and the difference frequency. So, yeah, that's all. So let's um, plot the signals in order to, to have a look at the time domain signals by using a subplot. We will plot three signals, the message signal, the carrier signal, and the amplitude modulated signal. And later on, we will have a look at the spectra. So we plot T against our message signal. Message signal. And the second subplot will be our carrier signal. And again, the carrier signal is needed in order to transmit our message signal. And the carriers, the amplitude of the carrier signal, according to this formula here, gets modulated with the message signal. So we have XC. Then we have here the carrier signal. Carrier signal. And then our third signal is our amplitude modulated signal. So we plot T against Y, tidal message, uh, sorry, amplitude modulated signal. And let's fire it up and have a look. So I will change the window that you can see what we just generated. And here it is. So here you can see the three signals. In the first row, we have our original message signal. So our voice, music, any signal that contains information that we want to transmit. In order to be able to transmit that signal, we use a much higher, in frequency much higher, carrier signal. The carrier signal here is a, a carrier frequency of two kilohertz. And what we can see in the third row is the amplitude modulated signal. And as you can already see, the envelope of the amplitude modulated signal corresponds to our message signal. So the information that we transmit is contained in the amplitude change of our carrier signal. And a quite easy way to demodulate, so meaning to reconstruct our message signal from our AM signal, is to use a diode, for example, an envelope detector that outputs us only the envelope of our AM signal, which is our message signal. So, but now let's have a look at the spectra because as initially um, said, there will be three frequency components according to formula in uh, line number 40. So to generate the spectrum, we are using the FFT. And when it comes to FFT, we have to determine the length of the FFT and the length will be set here to the length of our signal Y, amplitude modulated signal. And we need a frequency vector in order to plot it. Here we have a real valued signal, meaning that we have negative and positive frequency components. So we start from minus half of the sampling frequency up to half of the sampling frequency in order to plot our spectrum. And our spectrum will be FFT from Y with the length of N FFT. Quite easy. And then we create a new figure and plot our frequency vector against our spectra. Our spectra is a complex vector, so we have to take the absolute value. And the output of the FFT 
is um, arranged in the way that the positive frequency bi positive frequency bins are on on the first place and then on the second place the negative frequency bins but for visual representation we want to have the negative frequency bins on the right side and the positive on the left side therefore we can use the FF fft shift command in order to rearrange our frequency bins from our calculated FFT. And because we want to plot it uh, logarithmically, we take 20 times the logarithm of base 10. That's it, that's the plot of our spectrum. And we are turning on the grid because the plot looks nicer, and we give it a title called AM Signal Spectrum. So and we fire it up. Oh, we have a syntax error. We have a syntax error. Where is the syntax error? Oh, we are missing here. Okay, I can already see it. Now I have to show it to you. This is the old figure. So. And here it is. So what do we have here? Again, we have a real valued signal. That's the reason why we have negative frequency components and positive frequency components. Forget about the negative frequency components, we will only have a look at the positive frequency components. So, what do we have here? We see here three frequency components. And this is what we have already discussed. Amplitude modulation produces three frequency components. The dominant component here is our carrier our carrier signal at 2 kilohertz, there's the peak. And then, because of the multiplication of our message signal and our carrier signal, the trigonometrical theorem tells us it will produce on its output two additional frequency components, one here and one here. And they differ in, in a way that on the left side we have the difference frequency, meaning that we subtract the carrier frequency minus our message signal frequency, so 2 kilohertz minus um, uh, 100 hertz will result in uh, 1.9 kilohertz, and this is what we have here. We are not completely hitting 1.9 kilohertz, so you would expect the peak here. This is because of the, the spectral leakage. Uh, if we would uh, take a higher sampling frequency, we would see the peak here. And the second uh, component that arises from the multiplication of the message signal and the carrier signal um, is the sum signal, so the sum of the carrier frequency and the message signal frequency, which is 2 kilohertz plus 100 hertz, so 2.1 kilohertz, which we have here. So as, as expected, we have here three frequency components and the dominant one for sure is the carrier because we have chosen according to the modulation index uh, that our um, message, signal frequent, uh, message signal amplitude is lower compared to our carrier signal amplitude because of demodulation issues. You can read it in, in the description below of this video. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, a quick and dirty and very fast example and introduction to amplitude modulation. I hope you liked it. And so we can go back to our workspace. And then I would say we will see us the next time. Bye bye.